Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for uh, the, today's uh, Alaska weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, we have uh, the uh, Alaska weather has a new time for the uh, KTOO 360 TV station. It'll be airing an hour earlier instead of 7.30 p.m. It'll start uh, at 6.30 p.m., and that starts on the 20th of May, 2021, and uh, we'll continue uh, after that after that day, so a new time for the show. And moving on to the uh, breakup map here, uh, still a flood watch out there for the uh, circle area through tomorrow, actually flood watch along the Yukon River at circle through tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, breakup kind of uh, proceeding uh, in a orderly fashion without any major ice jamming occurring. Could be possible flooding around the circle area when due to uh, some ice jams and backed up high water. Moving on to the uh, satellite imagery, you can see a fair amount of clearing up over the Yukon Flats or along the Yukon River, Porcupine River as well, and in toward the uh, Koyaka, Kobuk Valleys, Noatak Valley, right on out to the western Arctic coast. See some clearing also over the northern Bering Sea, uh, north of St. Lawrence Island, and some sun breaks uh, on down in toward the uh, lower Yukon River Valley and Yukon Delta area. Also breaking out there over Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians, and looks like the Perbloffs may have seen some sun today as well. And Kodiak Island, pretty nice there. Uh, Southern Cook Inlet, uh, pick up the clouds, Northern Cook Inlet, uh, with uh, some shower activity going on over the Kenai Peninsula, up into Alaska, picked about a tenth of an inch of precipitation today, while the, uh, let's see, broad view on the Kenai Peninsula, about a third of an inch of rain, and also some rain moved up into the uh, Northern Copper River Basin area, McLaren, or along the Denali Highway, uh, McLaren River, they're west of uh, Paxson, picked up about a third of an inch. Paxson also had about a third of an inch of uh, rainfall today. Chicken picked up a tenth of an inch. That uh, qualifies as a wetting rain there for uh, chicken and uh, not quite a soaking rain, though, for uh, the Paxson area. But anyway, Cordova, four tenths of an inch with another trough that pushed up to the North Gulf Coast and uh, some clouds and showers in the panhandle today. Also, Nanilchik in Cook Inlet had about uh, three tenths of an inch of precipitation as well in the last 12 hours. And over the <clears throat> southern Cuscoom Valley, Sleep Mute had a tenth of an inch. Otherwise, uh, not too bad. No big storms around the state today. Uh, <clears throat> having the next front pushing into the Aleutians with some rain, light rain, and uh, breezy conditions as well. Let's see. Uh, ADAC getting southeast winds up to 35 miles an hour ahead of that front there with periods of rain going on. Otherwise, up on the uh, other end there, uh, Barter Island, Kaktova, Kaparik, seeing some little bit of light snow activity and fog today, keeping visibilities down to anywhere from one to three miles. Cloudy skies uh, and enough fell for one hundredth of an inch water equivalent, melting that down, but pretty light temperatures just under 20 degrees at mid-afternoon there on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Uh, that ranged from 19 at Kaparik to 66 degrees of Fairbanks at mid-afternoon today. And uh, some showers uh, picking up, light showers uh, there south of the Tanana Valley, Alaska Range into south central Alaska with uh, some rainfall, as I mentioned, over the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound into uh, western Turnigan Arm. In fact, actually the Portage Glacier area is reporting heavy rain at times this afternoon. With winds out of the east at about 25 miles an hour, we had scattered showers over the Panhandle. <clears throat> Not too bad out over the Bering Sea uh, ahead of that front, just uh, basically uh, variably cloudy, light winds and some sunshine. And for tonight, that front will push a uh, chance of rain in toward Nikolsky on Udmak Island late tonight. To otherwise, look for continued uh, clearing periods for the Pribloffs and light winds. And southwest coast, a uh, weak couple of high centers there will keep winds light and conditions dry. We have some lingering showers 
over the uh, Cuscombe Delta up into the lower Yukon River Valley area, maybe to the Nalato Hills, but very light and scattered to isolated at best, and also along the trough axis into the interior. Those will be diminishing tonight and still could carry some light rain and snow showers, very light up over the eastern Beaufort's coast and the Brooks Range area. And showers or light rain periods along the North Gulf Coast uh, kind of end over the southern pan. It looks like some pretty good clearing possible. Dixon entrance into uh, Prince of Wales Island, Ketchikana Net, Metlakatla. Next system you can see there southeast of Kodiak Island uh, slowly moves northeast and northeast. And for tomorrow is really not, it, you know, has a fair ways off the southeast coast there. Some weak ridging will help dry it out and increase the sunshine over the central and southern panhandle. Showers linger to the north there. And actually picking up a chance of thunderstorms in the interior now. Uh, they'll be uh, a little more numerous on the showers, any one of which could develop into an isolated thunderstorm or two there in the central interior, maybe along the uh, mountains train of the Copper River Basin, Alaska Range, possibly on into the Yukon. And uh, otherwise, just a chance of showers again into the southwest interior, Cuscombe, Yukon, Delta, Bristol Bay, chance of showers, variably cloudy, dry, and partly to mostly cloudy for Kodiak Island under high pressure. And it should be a drier day for the Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound area, but still a lot of clouds, still a risk of a shower. And it looks wet for the eastern Aleutians there, periods of rain and fog on up into the Pribilofs, as well as the western and central Aleutians with the main low center hanging back. And look for a lot of IFR over the northern Bering Sea with considerable low clouds and fog in through the Bering Strait to the Chukchi Sea. And winds beginning to increase along the Arctic coast uh, up there, kind of tightening gradient, uh, not so much uh, tomorrow, but Thursday going for gale warnings on the extreme east side of the coast there. Otherwise, lighter winds with fog on the west side down into the northern Bering Sea, low clouds and fog, maybe some clearing for Norton Sound, Nome, partly sunny. And a trough axis in the interior and uh, could uh, kick off isolated thunderstorms over the 40-mile uh, country into the Wrangell Mountains, otherwise scattered showers along that trough to the south, dry, and maybe some clearing for uh, Kenai Peninsula Cook Inlet, more clearing in store for the southwest interior right out to the coastline. And that system finally pushes rain into the panhandle. And the next system brings gale force winds into the Alaska Peninsula and the Pribilofs, uh, 30 knots of the Pribilofs scales for the Alaska Peninsula there with uh, periods of rain, possibly moderate to maybe briefly heavy at times. Lows for tonight, 30s and 40s, southern Alaska, upper 30s, lower 40s, and uh, same thing for the central interior, but 20s, lower to mid for the Brooks Range, and in the teens for the Arctic coast, near freezing there, Nome out to St. Lawrence Island, and the Yukon Delta coast, mid 30s for the Pribilofs, upper 30s for the Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula, lower to mid 30s for Bristol Bay. Highs tomorrow, mid 50s uh, in the interior to maybe near 60 for McGrath, and upper 40s to mid 50s for the Panhandle interior again. A little cooler with more clouds, so call it 55 to 61 for the highs, near 40 for the Brooks Range, and 30s for the North Slope, upper teens, lower 20s for the Arctic coast, mid 40s for the Seward Peninsula, lower to mid 40s for the Bering Sea. Lows the following morning, not much different than what we'll see in the 30s, all above freezing, 30 to 40. Mid 30s to near 40 in the interior. Still chilly there for the Arctic coast, uh, 10 to 15. 30 to 35 northern Bering Sea, 35 to 40 to the south. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic here for uh, Wednesday morning showing solid IFR from the Bering Strait to uh, Norton Sound, all the Seward Peninsula, up across the uh, Noatak Valley, northwest coast, Arctic coast, North Slope, Brooks Range, into the uh, Kobuk Valley, Selwick Valley as well. And uh, looks VFR there from the central Copper River Basin, up across the upper Tanaw Valley, 40 mile country, and all along the Yukon River. Uh, right on out to the coast, good VFR, Eastern Bering Sea there, and then solid IFR for the Aleutians. And then the area of IFR for Bristol Bay, area of IFR along the Western Alaska Range, maybe up to Denali or so, and some marginal VFR, uh, most of Southern Alaska there up into this, the uh, Fairbanks area, IFR along the Kenai Peninsula, North Gulf Coast, Southern Prince William Sound, to the uh, near Elfin Cove, Marginal VFR in the central coast, so it's VFR over the inland areas of the southeast coast. And we'll see that uh, for Wednesday, or for Wednesday afternoon, VFR, southern third of the panhandle, v marginal VFR for the northern two-thirds, 
including the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, most of Cook Inlet, mostly about the foreland southward, Marshall VFR, Kamishak and Kachemak Bays included, Lake Iliamna, Western Cook Inlet to the Western Alaska Range Marginal, Cuscombe Valley on out to the coast, VFR, most of the interior VFR, marginal VFR, uh, Western Brooks Range, Delong Mountains, Northwest Coast, Northern Seward Peninsula, IFR for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, IFR right off the uh, coast of the Panhandle there. <clears throat> that shifts inland Thursday morning with that slow moving system. IFR in the north, marginal in the south, and IFR just about along all the coastline. Narrow band of IFR there from the Barren Islands across southern uh, Kenai Peninsula, Kachemak, Kamishak Bays there, Iliamna Lake, and marginal VFR southeast part of the state stays VFR there along the Yukon River and the Cuscombe Delta as well as Bristol Bay, IFR, western central north slope, uh, Brooks Range, Alaska, or Arctic Coast, through the Bering Strait, and again, much of the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, uh, IFR for Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon shaping up like this solid IFR for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians and up across uh, the Bering Strait, uh, Kivalina, Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, maybe Point Lay marginal but uh, Central Arctic Coast, Central North Slope, IFR, VFR, Eastern Bulver Sea Coast and a good portion of the interior, VFR for the afternoon, some marginal VFR possibly lingering Southern Cook Inlet into the Barren Islands, North Gulf Coast, Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound looks uh, like an IFR kind of day coming up for the Panhandle. And for passes tomorrow, I'll we'll go IFR for Attic Anatuvik. Attigan uh, should be better, marginal VFR at times. Lake Clark and Merrill, occasionally marginal throughout the entire day. Rainy, same forecast, occasional mar marginal VFR at times. That means VFR at other times for all three passes. Windy, though, will be VFR from start to finish, as well as Isabel. Mintasta VFR. Tanita, marginal to start, better in the afternoon, VFR hopefully. And Portage, IFR becoming marginal. And for Chilkoot and White, VFR becomes marginal VFR as the day progresses. Freezing levels, two to 4,000 feet across uh, much of the interior, as well as the Panhandle, Southern Central Bering Sea. And for uh, icing, we've got uh, areas of uh, isolated moderate possible uh, up to the North Gulf Coast, into the Northern Panhandle, Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, and then the narrow band of that uh, rather weak front there coming into the Fox Islands and staying southwest of the Pribilof, so otherwise not too serious uh, day as far as icing goes. And for the uh, jet stream, we've got a trough over the western bearing and uh, way out west there. So southerly central bearing, 50 to 65 knots, 80 knots southwesterly Fox Islands, 55 knots into the panhandle, light winds over the interior even at 9,000 feet, and uh, otherwise on the southeast quadrant of the uh, lows there, one over the Yukon, another one there south in the Gulf of Alaska, southwesterly 35 into the Panhandle, and southerlies up as high as 45 knots there over the eastern Bering Sea, otherwise more in that uh, 22, 30, or 40 knot range, 20 knots through the Bering Strait, and light variable winds over the interior, even at 3,000 feet, although at this elevation will pick up a breeze of 20, 25 knots out of the east or east southeast for the Arctic coast. Light winds for the Panhandle interior and look for 20 to 45 knot winds along that frontal boundary uh, over the Bering Sea and the Pribilof Islands, otherwise 25 for the central Aleutians. Turbulence wise, uh, consumer moderate chop uh, Alaska Peninsula to Akun Island, otherwise light to isolated moderate chop for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Leatherbacks are the largest turtles on Earth, growing up to seven feet long and weighing more than 2,000 pounds. These sea turtles are among the most highly migratory animals on Earth, some traveling up to 10,000 miles a year between their nesting and feeding grounds. Prevalent in every ocean except the Arctic and Antarctic, the species overall is declining, more so in the Pacific. In the Eastern Pacific, the Mexican population was once thought to be the largest in the world and has experienced an alarming decline. This trajectory of decline that we've seen and actually collapse, we're talking about only 20 or 30 turtles nesting every year, where thousands used to just 40 years ago. That's the kind of dramatic decline. The Western Pacific population has been declining steadily, and it's particularly critical to act now before it collapses, while there are enough turtles in nests to respond to conservation measures. 
but threats to all leatherbacks in the Pacific need to be addressed. The top threats to populations are uncontrolled coastal development, all the bad stuff on the nesting beaches, egg harvest, poaching of the females, predation on the eggs by dogs and pigs. Deforestation makes the sand too warm and dry for the, and the eggs don't hatch. So another one is incidental capture in fishing gear. During their vast migrations, they get caught in fishing gear throughout the Pacific. And finally, marine debris, which the leatherbacks mistake for their favorite food, jellyfish, and they choke on those. Protecting leatherbacks in U.S. waters alone is not enough to ensure the continued existence of the species. The highly migratory nature of Pacific leatherbacks requires cooperation and international collaboration. NOAA is focusing on partnerships with Mexico, Central America, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands in the Pacific. Our action plan promotes a holistic recovery strategy that addresses all the sources of mortality. So that's basically ensuring that the remaining nesting sites are protected and the nests produce as many hatchlings as possible. And then secondly, in tandem with that is reducing the fisheries related mortalities. We're working with international partners to incentivize co community participation on the nesting beach conservation and developing alternative livelihood programs that wean communities off leatherback resources and introduce alternative methods for food and income. Recovery is going to take a long time, on the order of 20 to 30 years at least before we see some of these actions bear fruit. But here in the U.S., we can all help leatherbacks by making seafood choices, for instance, that support sustainable fishing practices. And beachgoers can certainly do their part by keeping our oceans clean of plastic debris, picking up marine litter, particularly plastic bags. Together with our partners, we are strengthening protection and conservation efforts to ensure a future for leatherbacks helping them to survive and once again thrive in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. For over 40 years, NOAA scientists have been collecting data and piecing together the story of the gray whale. Each year, new discoveries are made, revealing the secrets of this ancient traveler. With the Northeastern Pacific population recovered, leading scientists from the NOAA Southwest Fisheries Science Center continue their research efforts to help save the Western population from extinction. The most effective way to identify individuals and count the population is to photograph them from the surface. Using the gray whale's distinctive markings and gray spots caused by parasites on their skin, scientists document these characteristics to identify individuals. So we're able to track migratory pathways and corridors by the simple use of photo identification. There are other ways to do that as well, biopsy sampling and genetics. And from the air. Aerial photography is one way you can study animals based on their size and shape. So you can learn a lot about nutritive and reproductive condition of whales just by measuring their size and shape from vertical aerial photographs. You can also put satellite transmitters on them and track them remotely. You put the transmitter on and let them go and you watch them move across the Pacific or down to China or wherever it might be. To further learn and discover where these great sojourners swim, the team of researchers traveled to Russia and set up camp on Sakhalin Island. The main focus of our research uh, while we were on Sakhalin was to collect photo identification. If it was a whale that we had not collected a genetic sample from previously, we would also attempt to collect a sample from the whales. 
Whereas whales are endowed with natural insulation, their human observers must gear up to brave the cold in order to study these marine giants up close. We're typically only able to work about one third of the time that we're there, and that's mostly due to this fog that just invades the area and sits sometimes for weeks on end. So it can be very challenging to try and do field work in this site. Recently, two whales from the western population surprised scientists by migrating across the Pacific to the waters of California and Mexico. It's a really fun finding. It's added another piece to the puzzle that we didn't previously know about. And I would have to say that it's opened up more questions than we had before. Research scientists from Japan, Russia, and the United States share images of animals they've spotted. We take a photograph of an individual off of Sakhalin Island, and we get a phone call from Japanese scientists, and they say, hey, guess what? We've got a picture of a gray whale in Japan. We say, can you send it to us? We'd love to try and match it. They'll send us the picture, we'll compare it to our catalog, and they'll say, hey, we've got a match from Sakhalin to Japan. Unlike many species of whales that still remain on the endangered species list, the Eastern Pacific gray whale, once on the brink of extinction, now numbers about 20,000 individuals. Recovery efforts that started 40 years ago and the ongoing research and monitoring by NOAA scientists have contributed to the conservation of the gray whales. Together with legal protection and public education, scientists are playing their part to ensure the survival of this magnificent migratory animal. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back uh, on today's uh, sea ice analysis. Uh, continuing to do a slow dissolve out there along the main ice edge, slowly melting back northward, as well as uh, even beyond the ice, the main ice edge that you see there, thinning out uh, over the uh, area south of the Bering Strait, and even to a lesser extent uh, north of the strait there. And that's going to continue uh, as it usually does uh, throughout the month of May. And moving on to coastal water forecasts, we've got, um, get the cursor on the right monitor there, southerly winds 10 to 15 knots with the central northern inside waters, uh, Stevens Passage northwest is 15, 3 foot seas. And along the coast light winds tomorrow, westerly is 10 knots, 5 foot seas in the south coast and south to southwest breeze at 10 knots for the north coast. And then on Thursday, we'll throw some small craft advisories in around the central coast there for southerlies at about 25 knots. Otherwise, uh, south to southeast winds uh, 20 knots, turn east on the north coast there at 20 knots with seas around 7 feet. And southeast winds, central southern inside waters at 10 knots, light seas, Lynn Canal south at 10 with 3 foot seas. Prince William Sound, light east winds tomorrow at 10 knots, north Gulf Coast, light, winds, light south winds at 10 knots, 4 to 5 foot seas. Uh, Barren Islands, light south winds 10 knots, southeast 15 for Kamishak Bay and Cook Inlet, south at 10, 2 to 3 foot seas. Light winds continue for Cook Inlet and actually become a little more variable east south of the Forelands, northern Cook Inlet, southwest at 10. East winds 10 knots, 2 foot seas, Prince William Sound. Pick up a breeze uh, out of the east 15 to 20 knots with 4 to 5 foot seas for the north Gulf Coast. And we got small craft advisories back in the forecast for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay. Where east winds should be at uh, 25 knots sustained with 7 to 9 foot seas. Kodiak Island variable winds 10 to 15 knots, 4 to 5 foot seas. And for the Alaska Peninsula, east southeast 20 to 25 knots with small craft advisors on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. And Bristol Bay light southeast winds at 10 knots, seas 2 feet. Outlook for Thursday, gale warnings come into the Alaska Peninsula there for south to southeast winds 35 knots and actually on the pacific side of the peninsula cape sarachev all the way up to sitkanak we've got gale warnings and from castle cape to Sit sitkanak they'll be southeast at 35. kodiak island east winds 25 knots six to nine foot seas bristol bay winds coming up uh, to 30 knots from the east seas building to seven feet on Alaska Island, or actually uh, both on Alaska and Mac Island, small craft advisory southeast 25 to maybe 30 knots with uh, six to seven foot seas. 
South 20 knots, 8 Akanatka, 5 to 6 foot seas, Amchitka Island south of 20, seas 7 feet, and for Kiska, Shimi and Atu, southeast 15, 7 foot seas. Small craft advisories there for Shimi and Atu and Kiska, uh, for northwest 25, Amchitka Island, small crafts with westerlies at 30 knots, seas building to 10 feet, and 20 to 30 knots, southwest winds for 8 Akanatka, small craft advisories, Fox Island, south to southwest. 25 to 30 knots with 7 to 14 foot seas. For the southwest coast tomorrow, southeast at 20, southeast 15, St. Lawrence Island, and southeast 25 for small craft advisories for the Pribilofs, light winds for Norton Sound, east 20 for St. Matthew Island. Those will become northeast 30 for St. Matthew Island, east winds 30 knots, small craft advisories for the southwest coast, and St. Lawrence Island, east 25, Pribilofs, southeast 25 knots, seas 8 feet. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast tomorrow, brisk wind advisory back, uh, winds pick up a little bit again, but 25 knots, 30 knots out of the east on the west side, central coast east at 20, and light winds uh, there from uh, Cape Beaufort all the way down to Wales, and then variable 5 to 10 knots, Wales to Cape Beaufort, picking up to uh, 20 knots from the east for the western Arctic coast, and then central Arctic coast, small craft advisories, east 25 knots with gale warnings over toward demarcation point for 35 knot winds out of the east. For tonight, uh, already you can kind of see the gradient tightening up a little bit up there over the north slope in the Arctic coast from the Brooks Range on out. Uh, so winds will be gradually picking up over the next couple of days, otherwise they'll stay dry. And maybe some areas of fog and low clouds uh, tonight there, showers in the interior. Showers for the north Gulf coast and to a lesser extent over the southeast interior. Panhandle kind of showery, but uh, drying out down south, and that front weakening as it brings rain in toward the eastern Aleutians. High pressure along the uh, coast there will keep it dry and uh, with light winds. And for tomorrow, a uh, weak uh, trough in the, uh, along the Yukon River there kick off some showers. Isolated thunderstorms possible there over the uh, Tanana Valley, central interior to the border and into the Yukon. Otherwise, uh, partly sunny southern Panhandle, chance of showers in the north. And here's a look at uh, Thursday's chart with the uh, next potent storm coming into the Alaska Peninsula. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>